What's going on everyone? We're back finally. I know I took a week off. It's not what I wanted to do, but unfortunately with the time that I had, wasn't able to put out another video for you guys this last week. But today, we have another video that we are releasing to you guys. So, I did say that there was Chevy content coming soon, and guess what? It's time for some Chevy content. So, what I actually did end up picking up was a new radiator. Obviously, this thing needed one. I mean, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you like how old this thing is. It's probably been in the car since my grandfather had the car. Um, but obviously you can see it's leaked a little bit and there actually is a pinhole leak down here at the bottom. So when the car is idling for, you know, 10 minutes, there's a pretty big dribble that starts coming out. So this old thing, pretty old. We're going to get rid of this and I'm going to show you the new radiator that we just picked up for this thing. There is actually a lot of different options for, you know, old hot rods, um, for radiators and such. They have single core, two core, three core, and obviously the more cores that you have in the radiator, the bigger the radiator is and the more uh, coolant that it is going to hold. Um, now, I did go ahead and go with a three row radiator just because this thing does like to overheat. Um, even just idling, it'll get, get a little warm. It does have an electric fan on it already on a toggle, so like once the car does start getting too hot, you know, flip the switch on, and it starts cooling the car down. Now the car still does have a clutch fan on the motor. I did pick up another fan that we might turn around and put on the back side, which is where the clutch fan would normally go. So let's go ahead and show you the radiator. So you take a look at that and then I'll explain more about the fan and like what we might do, what we might not do. It's just an idea. Here's the new radiator. Let's check it out. So I did get this radiator from Champion uh, Cooling Systems. Um, they pretty much had the best bang for your buck. I checked everything on the website um, and compared it to a few other brands and this brand actually is pretty well known. Let's check this thing out here. Ooh, shiny. pick this up out of here with one hand there we go and we can put that down so it's shiny it's nice it's pretty thick compared to that one that we have in there let's go ahead and pull this out of the wrapper here so we can take a better look at it so hard to do this with just one hand. Oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. So I figured instead of having a black radiator that sits in there, obviously it's a little discreet looking, but I wanted something that had a little bit more, more pop in the engine bay. Plus we do have to um, clean the heads that are on the car now because they are polished. So we are going to have to clean those up and I should dress up the engine bay pretty nice. So this is the Champion 3 row radiator. It is meant for a 57 Chevy uh, with a V8. So this is what I was talking about here. I already do have an electric fan on the front side. This here is a transmission cooler. Um, but the fan's already here on the front. So, but what I'm going to have to do is take off this fan here from these little grommets through here. Or I might just disconnect the fan from its plug-in and pull the whole radiator out. And then uh, we'll pull that fan off and see what type of room that we have with the new radiator. So first we do have to get our drain pan underneath of our radiator hose in case it does leak. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the front of the car up so we can slide the pan under. Now that the pan is underneath the uh, lower radiator hose here, we can go ahead and take off this top one. And the hoses look like that they're still in pretty good shape, so I went ahead and I, I didn't buy new ones, but if worse comes to worse, I can always buy some new lines. They're too cracked or in bad shape. But we can at least get the radiator in place and make sure that it does fit correctly. Easy. 
Now the next one's a little harder to get to. It's a little further down here. position the camera to see if you guys can get a better look at it. Right, hopefully that's a little bit better for you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. The other side's going to be a bit harder because the battery's in the way, but we just take our uh, ratcheting 13 wrench, that's what the size these bolts are here on the side, and then we'll go ahead and take these off. So because of how the fan was wired in, we're gonna have to remove the fan off the radiator before we can go ahead and pull it out. Um, really simple to pull these out, how they were threaded through the radiator. Just take a, uh, you know, simple pliers, and you grab this side of it. There's like a little knob here, and then on the back side it has a little locking nut. And so you pull this out, and actually how it was wired through was a zip tie that goes through. This part goes through the radiator. It has another flat piece on the back side, like so. And then you go ahead and you put another zip tie head on here and you cut that down. Let's see if I can try to put this back in here. So anyways, it looks something similar to that. And then the radiator is sandwiched in between these two so that way it has a flat surface. Um, there are better ways to mount them, but these this actually is a really good way so far that I found. I've mounted my E36 radiator this way using zip ties and some flat pieces, and I haven't had a single issue, haven't had the radiator, you know, pop open because of this or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the, the last two. We're gonna pull the fan and move it, and then we're gonna go ahead and get the radiator out of here. Now that we went ahead and got this nice and loose, this is sitting over here to the side. We should be able to, uh, Come over here and pull out our radiator. This radiator is a lot heavier than it looks, to be honest. We can actually pick this fan up a little bit. Actually, I need to uh, cut a few zip ties right here so then that way we can get the fan from out of there and then we can take a closer look at that. Just find a handy dandy razor blade and then we go ahead and carefully cut the zip ties. There we go. That way we have a little bit of leeway here. So can pull the fan up and out like that. And now that's sitting there just fine. 
So now we just need to take these bolts off here so that we can take this clutch fan off so that we can make some room in here for the radiator. By the way, this is what the radiator looks like pulled out. So obviously you can see it is pretty old. Um, probably going to hang on to it just in case. I could probably always, you know, tack up where it was leaking at. And I have a backup one worst case scenario. But, I mean, everything on here looks, you know, old, rusted. Like, that's a pretty big gash. So, that was the one over here. So, maybe, uh, maybe we'll just hang on to it and test it. See if, where it's bad at. And, um, that way I actually know. But I do remember there always being a big puddle under this. So, we're getting to the bottom of that. So, these are a uh, 13 millimeter. And I just take this guy here. So I think that actually fits pretty well. The only thing I noticed is on the brackets here on the side is the hook that's on here or the elbow. Um, one of these has to sit on the outside and then this one, but on this side can sit on the inside of the railing. So there's a small fitment problem, but we are going to go ahead and make it work. All right, so these are the little retainer clips that we're holding the radiator in place. So these have, you know, threads as you can see in there. And then these two little grooves here are what fits on the inside of this part, but on the radiator side. So then all you have to do is put the bolt through and this is already hooked into the radiator like this way. And then you just go ahead and put your bolt through and it stays in place. I was actually able to reuse this old hardware that's right here. All I did was put the uh, nut on the back side here and just went ahead and bolted that through. Um, I held this up in place so that way nothing in the front here was hitting because how I had it set was this little nipple guy was sitting on here just so I could get the radiator in place. And then I was able to lift up, tighten one side, then lift up, tighten this side so we could get the correct height for the radiator. Um, so now it's just a matter of a uh, Putting in the rest of the bolts on the side, connecting the hose down below, connecting the top hose here, reconnecting the fan onto the front, and we should be good to go. Okay, guys, so I got the radiator in. We still connected it using the original like mounts. These are ones that look very similar. They're just a uh, locking nut and a bolt. Um, so we got that put in and in place. Um, now all I have to do is hook up the radiator hoses, top and bottom, and then we do have to uh, reconnect the fan to the front of the radiator. As of right now, I'm just gonna keep this single fan on the radiator, um, drive it around a little bit, kind of see you know, how hot it's actually gonna get, and then turn the fan on manually each time. And then if I do need it, I will try to put on another fan. Um, that way one will stay on consistently and then one will just kick on in case we need it. So, but going to a three core radiator, I don't think I should have a ton of problem with cooling, um, especially these old cars normally, like once they get hot, you can kind of just rev them up a little bit, try, try to get the uh, coolant flowing through the motor as fast as possible, um, or unless you can get on some open road and you can kind of gun it and let all the cool air that's coming into the radiator from driving forward. Um, so just some small things left, um, probably in the next video, we will uh, take this thing out for a uh, cruise, see how she does on the open road. Everything else on the car works great. It's just, you know, major radiator leak. Obviously, that's a big problem. Um, we also do need to get gas in this thing. I think it's been a little bit. And I don't like keeping old gas in this thing for very long. You know, old cars like this do need to be driven often. 
Um, that way everything gets lubricated properly and it's not like just sitting here collecting dust like it is. So maybe we'll wash the car and then go take it for a cruise or something like that. Um, I actually have been meaning to hit a uh, Cars and Coffee here soon. There's one locally in my town. Bunch of the older guys that live around here bring out their hot rods and stuff. So it should be a pretty cool time. So maybe we'll get that in the vlogs in you know, the next week or here next week or so. Um, I do have to check the dates on that though and uh, see when that's actually happening. But those are some plans hopefully for the Chevy here soon. But let's get back to this and let's uh, get this radiator fully installed and uh, cool it inside of it and then we'll fire this thing up and uh, let her get up to temperature. <laughs> It does take, you know, like 10 minutes or so for this thing to warm up. Um, right around 180 to like 200 degrees roughly is where it's like happy at. Stay right on temperature too. The fan kicked on. It was almost to like 200. And then I kicked the fan back on and she dropped back down right at temp. Obviously we're sitting here idling. Um, and the fans on and I'm right at well 185 can't really complain with that obviously sitting in traffic or you know street driving it may get a little hot but just with this one electric fan I really can't complain with this thing pretty much kill the fuel pump so that way um, she will idle back down by herself and get all the fuel out of the top of the carburetor um, so that way we don't have fuel just sitting up in the carburetor making all of you know the gaskets and stuff up in there um, rot out because that does make them rot out a bit faster so I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing get down run out of fuel and then uh, we'll get back hey, you can kind of hear it she's starting to choke herself out and there she goes so pretty simple install Nothing too crazy about it. You just gotta make sure that you get to the right radiator the first time. Um, like I said, there was a small little fitment issue where this radiator was just a hair bigger than the old one. I mean, you can't really complain about that. Um, everything still works, it still fits. Um, it still looks pretty OEM in here. I don't know how well you guys can see, but that's pretty much the original mounting holes for how um, the old radiator sat in here. This thing also, make sure it's not super hot, and it is, but this thing isn't going anywhere. It ain't moving, which is, that's a good sign. You don't want that flopping around. All right, guys, um, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for today's video. The next video, we actually are probably gonna take this thing out. Um, it needs to be driven. We gotta get some of that old fuel out. It's probably been in there, I don't know, maybe three months, maybe a little less. So we do need to drive and put some fresh fuel in it. Um, and then we'll also try to get some b-roll shots and all that of it so that way we can see it out in the open road uh, Maybe some poles and stuff. So um, That's probably gonna be for the next video might include some other stuff um, Might hop around a little bit um, Let me know what you guys want to see. I mean, I've got you know plenty of cars here We can start some content on the e30. I know that uh, is state ref But we are gonna have to pull the exhaust and certain stuff off the car to make it you know legal again and then go get it inspected so we can get it past state ref so that way we can actually drive this thing on the street. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out right here. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for the rest of the content I got for you. Thanks guys, see you later. Just write your lines cause I feel like a champ Heavyweight, first place, who could expect to get slapped? I'm running laps, round the competition, thinking no last I just laugh, take a sip, as I go and sit back Got the almond in my coffee, mix with toffee, just packed Well I stack as many rhymes in my mind for advance Situations where I might have to release in their hands